Hello, hey Justin. Hello. Hi to both Justins. <laughs> Hello. Have you guys um, so done yet? Justin Mason. <laughs> <laughs> Feels so tough. Uh, how's uh, do you guys do your KubeCon recordings yet? Yeah, yeah, I did them well at very last minute. Same here. When the when the schedule first came out, the first thing I did was like scroll down to the bottom of the page and grab all the <laughs> slots. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have a an agenda today. I was talking to the Keyline folks about um, doing a presentation, but it looks like one of the speakers is not um, it's not available. So let's see, this may be a really quick meeting. Let me put the meeting notes in the chat. Hello, everyone. Hey, yeah, let's say. I just put the meeting notes in the chat, so if you, you want to just put in your name there. And we'll wait a couple more minutes for people to join into Zoom. Uh, Justin Kapp was from the assessment side. Is there anything that um, needs discussion? Uh, yes, but uh, Robert's before me in terms of updates, and he may uh, his he may want to discuss his issue. So I'll let him talk about that uh, when he gives his update. I guess the only other thing is there was a question about uh, key cloak here. And um, it looks like they've just completed the dumb question phase and initial review. And so they're going to need to schedule a presentation um, for the, you know, for the group here to tell people what they've been up to. So I don't know if any of those folks are on this call or if you're not and you watch the video later, um, please coordinate with us to find a time to present in the meeting. All right, cool. So it looks like uh, more people have joined in. So let me repost this uh, on the meeting link again. And then let's get started with the check-ins. Um, OK, so let's go down the list. Um, all right, let's start with Robert. Do you want to talk about Cloud Custodian? Sure, good morning. So we did a, a an initial kickoff call with the Custodian team and uh, Justin and I, and I think that the big need is from this group, we'd love to get two or three additional volunteers who can help with the reviewing the self-assessment and then reviewing what we suggest as uh, SIG security. And uh, I'm, I'm leading that process, so I'll, I'll do most of the heavy lifting. <laughs> I just need uh, as many volunteers as would be interested to, to be additional sets of eyes and, and give uh, good feedback. So if there's anyone there who would like to use this as an opportunity to participate in the process, learn more about the process, um, I promise to make it a, an, an easy ask. Awesome. So is this for the, this year past the um, dumb question phase? So I forgot what, what the, the new name was. Um, and you're looking for reviewers for the, the actual assessment, right? Well, I think I think we're. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Justin. I think we can reopen the uh, initial question phase because we have the most recent updates from the custodian team on their uh, self-assessment document. So now the process really starts. I'll be reviewing that that information. Obviously, if we can get two or three more sets of eyes on it, 
we'll, we'll allocate enough time for a productive review of that. And then I think we will do a few rounds of question and answer with the custodian team. So that the, the, the question and answer phase starts now. And, okay, uh, gotcha. Depending on how many volunteers we can get, I, I think the, the custodian team is, is flexible and we can elongate that cycle if we need it. Um, so yeah, I think we have enough runway to make it productive. Yeah, in general, we've always had um, maybe three or four additional people other than the main reviewer doing the review. And right now, it's just Robert and myself, and I'm in the process of moving to Shanghai for the fall, which means that my ability to put like really focused attention on this is also limited. So we really need, um, you know, two or three other motivated people who can go and, and give a hard look at this. Um, because we've had, I don't think there's been an assessment, at least none of the ones that, that uh, I've been on, um, where we haven't had multiple people with really, really, really valuable feedback that the assessment would have been much worse without it. It's never just been like a person steps in and basically does the assessment and everybody else just kind of ticks a box. Yeah. So um, would really appreciate having uh, two, three other folks. If you're not quite sure about it, it's fine to go and say, hey, I'd like to participate, but I don't know what I can contribute. That's okay too. Um, you know, we, over time, people get more and more comfortable. Yeah, and maybe we can also, um, I'm not sure if you've already done that, but maybe we can post it in the Slack group uh, in case for those people in other time zones, maybe you will participate as well. Sorry, you broke up a little bit. Can you repeat oh, the question? Um, I was just saying maybe we can, if you already haven't put it on the Slack, the Slack channel, um, then maybe some people that are not on the call that may be able to help as well. Yeah, so so two things on so I did I did post yesterday. I'm happy to post daily. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and and also okay. there is a, a custodian assessment channel, which I posted there. Yes, I, I mean definitely we'll we'll post again today after this. All right. Cool. Thanks, Robert. Um Justin Kaplis, do you want to continue on with the the, the chat about Key Club? Um, I don't have too much more to add about that, but I I do have another very brief thing that I'll mention that doesn't warrant like a real agenda item, which is a few weeks ago, um, I had mentioned kind of in passing in the meeting that I'm planning as part of an application security class that I'm teaching in the fall to try to basically um, take students through um, looking at a badly set up in like a, a very, you know, think about all the mistakes people, you've seen people make setting up cloud native, um, trying to give them an environment like that and then talking about those mistakes and having them fix them. Mm -hmm. And um, so I mentioned that there was a lot of like, oh, that's a great idea. I'd like to participate kind of things. And I wanted to mention to folks that I haven't forgotten about this and at some point in the not too distant future, I will get something basic together and uh, maybe start the discussion either on the Slack channel or in these meetings, depending on time. Okay, sounds good. Just, uh, to, just to follow up there, Justin, would you see that as totally separate, distinct from, or somewhat overlapping with something like a red teaming setup? Um, I mean, the perspective we're giving in this exercise is more of you've been hired into a company like, you know, and they had some, you know, the, the, the boss's nephew had looked online and hacked some crazy thing together. And now you have to actually make it, um, you know, like work and be reasonably secure. I mean, it already works, but it's, you know, it'll have these like weird little errors that come up when you get, you know, certain things happen and stuff like that, um, which will be, you know, indicative of, act of security problems. But then there'll be a lot of things like, you know, like checking credentials into, like checking private keys into GitHub or database passwords or stuff into GitHub rather than using like Docker secrets or Vault or whatever. Um, and so the idea is, is rather than just tell the students, like, don't do these things, we'll give them a, an environment that's pretty basic 
um, but you know has has a lot of different really rookie mistakes in it and then that way when they're thinking about like oh you know like how do I set this up correctly or what do I do they already have an, sort of an example like a bad example to fix um, rather than just seeing it on a couple of slides or whatever and, and not really getting any experience. Okay, great. Makes sense. Yeah, so Justin, maybe if you want to, it sounds like, um, and probably, well, there's going to be KubeCon and stuff like that, but I'm guessing like after KubeCon in the next couple of weeks, um, if you want to put something in the, the plan meetings, and then we can, I think we will have a pretty packed um, September in terms of presentations, if you want to do that. Sounds good. All right. Um, so just to recap again on Keycloak, you mentioned that um, you're done with the dumb question phase and you require additional people as well for this? Um, sorry, so I want to make sure. So Keycloak is separate from what we were just talking about, which is Cloud Custodian. Right, right, yep. Robert's been talking about. So Keycloak, um, from what's been discussed here, um, according to Ash and Emily and others, they've made it through both of the both the dumb question phase or naive question phase or whatever we're calling it now, um, but also the uh, broader review so that everybody who's on in the assessment group, um, which is uh, Krishnan. Uh, Erinner, whoever that is, I'm sorry if I. Mark Hamilton. Uh, uh, okay, and uh, Emily have have in addition to Ash, who's the lead, all gone through and done like deep dives into the document and left comments. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, so that's now it's done. Done. Presentation. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, do you think that? So I'm not sure with the. Um, I guess let's see if we can find people for Cloud Custodian, but we, I'm just wondering whether anyone from the Keycloak team, you know, once that's done, whether they'd be interested in um, Cloud Custodian. It sounds like it's just kind of like a lack of people. Um, and also I think, which I want to get to the next point, um, I'm going to skip Justin Comics check-in for a bit um, because Andreas also mentioned about uh, looking for volunteers for the build packs assessment. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We really get to get a round up a couple folks, at least to to get started. Uh, the security assessment is available. I have actually started to glance over review. Seems pretty complete, but yeah, I could use some assistance from other folks, make sure we give it a, a thorough look. So uh, I'm just wondering, right, from the, from kind of like a resource perspective, I don't know, would we be spreading to then? Do you think we have enough to, or should we kind of like serialize some of these? I don't know what the, the current plan for this is. I, I think um, what, what I prefer we do so we have sort of kind of done two at a time at times, but that's mostly been when something is stalled. It hasn't really been like two completely or like a separate groups of people that, um, you know, in, in some cases we, we just had an assessment that stalled for a couple of weeks or a month or something. And then another assessment got started. So I prefer we don't have three active assessments now, at least, Unless we get plenty of people for Cloud Custodian, and then we have plenty of people for, you know, build packs, then great. Let's let's do it all. But I, I would prefer, you know, we won't do it, be doing anybody a service if we have half half an assessment for um, build packs and half an assessment for Cloud Custodian. Yeah. So. I'm guessing that we can kind of see, uh, like af after kind of calling for volunteers, let's see what the numbers are, and then maybe we can kind of see whether the reviewers would be okay with doing one assessment before the other. 
um, I don't know how that, that's going to work out, but I feel like it may be something that we may have to visit if we don't get, if we are spread a bit too thin. Yeah, it's a good point. Definitely something to consider. Uh, I wanted to test some folks who we worked together in the harbor assessment. So we have prior experience working together. I see Martin and Chase on the call. I've actually been meaning to reach out, see if they have the cycles to work and build packs and assemble that crew. But yeah, let's, let's see what we're able to get and determine we can certainly just pause one for the time being and do them in order. Okay. I just wanted to add that um, I'm, I'm still um, interested in uh, joining in other assessments, uh, but I just have to check my av availability. That's why I'm silent and don't have anything to add or say. But thank you for mentioning that. Address. Of course. Yeah, it was a good experience working together. I agree. For me too. Okay, so I think we're good with assessments. Um, Justin Carmack, do you have uh, an, uh, an update? Um, no, no, nothing today. Okay. Um, and I think the last update is Capel. Uh, I think we talked about Cloud Custodian already. Did you have something to add to that? Uh, no, I'm just in late. Uh, I heard the tail end of it. Uh, okay. So it sounded like uh, it wasn't clear what the what the result was. Is that uh, we're doing a call for volunteers and uh, otherwise uh, build packs in the queue in front, or what was what's the end result? Uh, I mean, uh, so we have a call for volunteers uh, for uh, cloud custodian. I'm assuming that. You know, unless I'm missing something and we have a completely fleshed out, completely ready to go team for build packs and they have everything going, then, you know, my um, inclination is to have Cloud Custodian, which has been around longer, um, go first. If for some reason we can't get a team together that's of adequate size or something, then maybe and another project's ready to go, we can maybe look at that. But um, because resources will be freeing up as we finish this, the key cloak assessment, um, you know, we can, we can look and, and reevaluate, but I think, you know, I don't think it really matters what order you view these as because key cloak should finish in a, in a week or two. And then I hope that frees up enough capacity for us to have both of them going. And so um, since, you know, the projects have already done a lot of the hard work and we're already kind of in the, the you know he's starting to get in the clarifying question phase it, it really I, I don't see this as like um a hill anyone should feel is worth dying on what the order of those two are because they both should be um going quickly quite both should be um going quickly quite soon sounds good okay it sounds like maybe we could wait one or two weeks, it may resolve itself, but let's see. <laughs> okay, um, I don't have, I don't think there's any um, kind of agenda items we have for today. Um, so is, does anyone have anything to talk about? If not, we'll probably just call it. Yeah, just a, okay. just a quick uh, update from the policy work group. We had our calls. We have um, 8 a.m. Pacific every other week. So we had our call. Uh, today at eight, um, meeting. I think the recordings. So we're using the this Zoom. I'm not entirely clear how the recordings get published. It's not not something I have access to. But I think that we have published them in the past through some mechanism. Um, but if they're on this Zoom, they should happen with the same words. These, but ping Amy if you're not on Slack. If you're not sure. Okay. Perfect. And then um, just a, a quick thumbnail. We're working, continue to work on a custom resource definition for Kubernetes for policy results. And we also had a discussion today about kind of NIST 853, FedRAMP, uh, SCAP, OSCAL, 
type automation. So if anybody's interested in that, feel free to, once we get the recording posted and or uh, ping here in the agenda meetings, I'm happy to reach out to anyone if they're interested in those topics. Will you be posting in the Slack channel when those videos are posted? Yes, I will do so. Thank you. That's it for me. All right. Um, any any other things anyone wants to bring up? I got a couple of things from Spiffy Inspire that may be relevant to several projects in the ecosystem. Uh, one being we've been looking closely at RFC 8705, which is OAuth 2.0 MTLS authentication and certificate certificate bound access tokens. So we've been looking to, for OAuth clients, use the spiffy IDs, protect that using MTLS and start bridging machine identity to user identity and just remove the need to manage client credentials. So for those doing assessments around user identity management related projects, something just I want to put in your head and like starting to light a path towards that. So just something to raise for consideration or awareness to some of these projects. A uh, couple other things. Have, sorry, have, have you, have you yeah. got any links to that? I'd be interested to. Yeah, for like. sure. Yeah, if you could share put that. the links in the in the meeting notes, I think that'd be good. In the chat, and yeah, I'll chat I'll send up a, in the meeting notes, I can include a brief summary, the description of that. A uh, couple other items. One has been uh, Ash. This may be interesting. Uh, extending SFITs to carry key value pairs that could be claims. Yes, I uh, was waiting for that. <laughs> uh, That's something that I've been looking forward to for a long time. Very anticipated. Yes. So, yeah, it blurs a little of the lines between auth N and auth C, but there's high demand for that. Uh, folks from Netflix, which Ironically, much of Spire was modeled after Netflix Metatron. Netflix has come around and said, hey, like Spire has now leaped forwarded uh, Metatron and we may be looking to consume this for some of our newer systems or have dual compatibility. So they may be opening up an issue around this pretty soon and we're gonna, we're gonna have a big request for comments around it. And uh, last, Justin, we had a we've had a conversations with the DoD around uh, Spire integrations for Intoto, and just Intoto machinery, but like well with like key pairs in Intoto, like how do bind those to Spiffy IDs? And there are things at several levels. Uh, I'll send some more detail on that, but I think it's another area that could benefit from like broader group discussion of how to move Spire earlier into the supply chain. And we've talked about that at, at different points in time, but I think we now have a particular end user wanting to see this work done upstream and the state of the technology is that, that, that we may be able to integrate it well. Great, yeah, I, I look forward to hearing more about that. Yeah, this is awesome, I'm super excited. Yeah, if cool. you could, if you could post some of the, uh, I got the RFC link, then put it in the meeting notes. If you could post the, if there are any links or design documents for the the other two points you brought up on the SVIC key value pass and the Spire integrations for Intel, though, uh, would be good if you can put them in the meeting notes as well. For sure, we'll do. Right. Thanks, Andreas. All right, um, any other topics? Okay, if not, uh, let's close the meeting for this week and I will see everyone again next week. Thank you. Later, thank you, bye.